to the terror point. We're about to show you what's wrong with this vehicle, and then we're going to show you how we're going to fix it. It performs very nicely. We've been driving it, using it, but it has this sort of a rotational rumbling sound in it. And it would sound somewhat like a bearing not being good. Well, I'm going to show you which bearing is not good. Here we are with the drive shaft at the back, the transmission. I'm going to push up on it a bit. See, I can bounce it with no real effort. What's wrong is the main shaft bearing right there has worn out. And, you know, I don't think Hudson's going to warranty this since they're not in business anymore. And it's a car from 1937, which makes this probably an 82-year-old bearing unless somebody replaced it before. So we're going to go through the process of how we actually take everything apart to replace the bearing and put a new one in in a step-by-step -step process. In a moment, we'll show you where we're going to start. Here's where we're going to begin at the rear of the drive shaft because we're going to take the drive shaft out so we have enough room to work up front. We've got to take off four nuts to take off two U-bolts, one on each side. Doing that will allow me to take the back portion of the drive shaft out. I'll have to do the same thing up front. These nuts you have to remove back here are a half inch size. You might be able to get a box in style ratchet on here but you don't have to take off that many turns so probably not worth it. There is a nut and lock washer on at each of the four points. side off camera because the camera is going to be in my way otherwise. All right here we are back at the transmission end. We're going to remove the four bolts. There's two on this side, two on this side. This is the emergency brake, parking brake system stuff in here. I don't want to take that out. I know it's in the way of seeing things but it's not worth the effort of removing that when I don't have to. So I'm going to remove the same nuts and u-bolts on the front now. All right you can see the drive shafts out. Looking up in this area we need to denote what has to come out and what doesn't have to come out. Right here this assembly this is your speedometer drive but this is a governor right here that's used only on a car equipped with the electric hand and auto clutch system. That's all going to have to come out because it's actually into the side of the housing here that we've got to take off. Also, transmission has to be drained. Right here is the filler point. Right here is the drain point. So we're going to drain it. When you refill it, we're going to fill it until it just barely runs out of that point over here, and then we'll cap it off. That way we'll know it's full. Up here, we have to take out the bolt in the back of the yoke. We are also going to have to take out three bolts. There's two you can see, one here, one over here. And there's one up top that you can't see. That will remove this particular housing. We do not need to take off this brake. We do not need to take off anything right here with the electric hands. None of that needs to come out. So we're going to leave that in place. Now it should be noted not only are we going to have to replace this main shaft bearing which is about right back in here and we'll show you in the shop manual what it looks like. We're actually going to have to replace the seal right there, which has been ruined by this. I'm going to do that all off camera as far as taking it apart, because if I work in front of the camera, all you're going to see is my back or the back of my hands or something. So we're just going to not do that on camera. I just want to explain what we're going to do to actually do this. Don't forget, before you take that housing off, be sure you do your drain on your oil here before the housing comes off. Here we have the external housing assembly that was on the car on the back of the transmission. 
looks like that. A little oily even though we drained the transmission. We're going to have to make a new gasket for that shortly. Right here is the actual assembly, what's left the assembly of the bearing when it was taken out. For example, the outside portion of the bearing, right there, complete with the snap ring groove, that's what the line is. The inside portion of the bearing, the cage that's supposed to hold all your nice little ball bearings and the ball bearings sitting here. When I actually got the rear assembly off, you found out real quick, yeah, this was a really bad bearing anymore. These three pieces were all effectively separate from each other. I ended up prying this one out repeatedly until I got it out. Then I ended up getting the cage and the ball bearings out. And last, I pried the center portion off the main shaft. So yeah, the bearing was very, very shot. Now, in looking at the bearing itself real close, discovered exactly what the bearing really is because I did not have that information in advance here. And I'm trying to find the right side. There's the right side and the right piece. And cleaned off a little bit. I'm gonna pick it up here and bring it up over by the camera, but it's not going to come in focus well enough for you to see what it is it looks like. But I can tell you what it is. It has ND42108 on it, which stands for New Departure 42108 as a part number. Well, New Departure doesn't exist anymore. It also has become NDH, New Departure Hyatt, and you cannot find 42108 as far as I could look at up on the internet at all. So 42108 doesn't easily cross via any internet interchange information I could find. Now probably what's not crossing when I pick this one back up is the fact it's got that groove in it. You could do this all by dimensions and decide what bearing to use and then you could add the groove to it. The groove is for, as I said, a snap ring, because it needs a snap ring, which I'll show you in the shop manual in a minute where it is. So you need a new departure 42108. Well, I couldn't find the interchange, but I found two of them for sale on eBay. They wouldn't be what I would call inexpensive, and I think I paid $48 for the one I ordered, and that includes free shipping, but still, that's fairly pricey, but at least I was able to find the exact part, so if you need one of these, it's a ND New Departure 42108 or an NDH for New Departure Hyatt 42108. Here we have a real mechanical procedure manual or a shop manual for Hudson and Terraplane back in the 30s. This particular manual, as you can see, this is leather bound. What this actually is, is this is a real unit book you would find in a dealership. Now, unfortunately, the dealership didn't mark it inside to say what dealership they were, but this is a dealership book. This is not what you would have gotten yourself that's quite this fancy. Uh, it is a book that you can actually disassemble and add pages to. And this is one of the things that tells me that it is actually a dealership book. On the side, everything's divided up. It's got real nice dividers. It's a very, very, very nice shop manual. So we're going to flip it open back here where I marked the page to the diagram for the transmission. And we'll enlarge that and we're going to look at a couple of things. Looking at the diagram here of the transmission, this cutaway, it shows us our yoke which has been, which has been removed, the bolt to remove it with. It shows us the housing that I showed you earlier. There's one bolt on top and two bolts on the bottom for a total of three. It also shows you it has a gasket paper in there. And then it shows you the bearing, which is right here. This is the bearing we're replacing right there in the drawing. And in the drawing, you can see the snap ring. The purpose of the snap ring is to cause the bearing to come just to the edge of the housing inside and not let it go in too deep. So that's the purpose of the snap ring. And this gives you a nice cutaway. Everything over here on the page next to it, which you can't see, all these numbers, it tells you what everything is, so they really know what you're looking at. So it's a really nice car or cars to work on. 
any of the Hudson and Terraplane models in the mid to late 30s. This is just an awesome book to work with. And one might be wondering why the bearing failed. You know, it's lubricated from the transmission. There is oil that gets in this whole area. And the transmission had full lubrication in it. Well, probably nothing more than the simple fact that bearing may be all the way from 1937. And I have no idea how many miles would have been on that transmission. I didn't replace it when I put it in the car here because everything was in good order at that time, so I left it. But over time, part of the cage system in it totally wore out, and when I emptied that transmission, I got a big blob of metal filings that came out of it. So that's where the metal went, went down the bottom of the transmission, came out with the oil, and now we're going to put the new bearing in. And when we do the new bearing assembly, I'm going to show you everything, even if my hands are in the way, so you can see how it all goes back together. Well, here we are with the new bearing that came in. We've added the snap ring because I couldn't get one with a snap ring, but it did have the groove. So it's the exact correct bearing I told you about last time. And now we're about to insert it. That snap ring controls the distance that it's inserted into the transmission. And I'm quite certain we're going to have to basically drive this on because it's a fairly tight fit on there. So I'm going to get something to do that and we'll be back with you. Alright, I've got a bearing driving tool that actually would work if we were doing like a wheel bearing. It'll only let me start this because you can see i got that bolt right there that's going to get in the way pretty quickly. But I want to get it started, so we'll start with that. Now we'll have to switch to a different tool to get it in further. Alright, now we're going to use a large socket here. We're going to try this and see how that works. Well, that one's not going to work because it's going to be too big. I'm going to have to get a little bit smaller one. Alright, a little bit smaller. Try again. ran out of room in the socket now. Back to another item. Now it would be nice if I had the perfect tool for this. We're going to use a punch now and work our way around. The whole idea is, is I don't want to ever hit that race in there and so that's why I'm using what I'm using. And when I'm going with the punch, as you can see I'm moving it around purpose so I don't just hit on one side all the time. And just to let you know the bearing was quite oily when I started which is really what you want so it's live as good as possible. And it's gradually getting down in there bit by bit. I would say I've got it home because the snap ring is snug against the case. Everything turns beautifully. No up and down movement. So we know it's already fixed. Now we got to put the rest of it together. All right, now I'm going to go up in here with a paper towel that has some pre-clean on it. That's the type of cleaner you use prior to painting. Purpose behind that is to make sure that I don't have any oil on the surface. 
because I'm going to install a brand new gasket utilizing Aviation Permatex to make sure I've got a good seal on this area. Here we have the brand new gasket. Got a little bit of dirt on it. I'll clean it off. Then I put Permatex on it. This one's laser cut. I did this here because I have the ability to do it and it will fit exactly. I've already checked that. If anybody needs one, we actually sell them on the website, believe it or not. And you can get one that way. It's somewhat complicated, so it's kind of nice you can get one easy that you can just put on. All right, we've placed the actual gasket up there with Aviation Permatex on it. I'm going to get the housing and have Aviation Permatex on the housing and put it in place along with the three bolts, and then we'll be able to fasten it up. One other thing I almost forgot to put in there. Obviously, that's a speedometer drive. It has a shoulder right there. So there's the shoulder. The shoulder goes towards the transmission. You can see that in the shop manual if you need to. There's also a little spacer washer on here to take up end play. So that goes on like that. And both of these parts just slide on. They're not tight fit. They just slide in place. The only thing that makes that speedometer drive work is that when you tighten down this yoke back here, so if you get the yoke loose, this gear will move and your speedometer will read wrong and do erratic things. All right, here we have our housing back, and we're going to put it in place. It goes so that the speedometer drive points down towards the driver's side. Of course, as I told you, I've got Aviation Permatex on the rear of it, exactly where the gasket goes. And now I'm putting in, at least for finger start, the three bolts that hold this housing. Two on the bottom, one on the top. The top one is the long one. In case you've forgotten, it is the long bolt, because there's two different sizes of bolts here. And for reference, star washers are what were on here originally. So I've got the same star washers on here. And since I hadn't taken this transmission apart, I just refinished the outside. I think that's probably how they built it, because it seems to have these star washers everywhere. Instead of another style of, or standard style of walk washer. So now I'm going to get an impact gun and we're going to tighten those all up real tight. Prior to actually tightening, it really is better to throw the yoke up in here so that the whole housing is aligning with everything since I've already got the seal in there. So I stuck the yoke in there that aligns the housing perfectly. Now I can impact the three outside bolts and then I can impact the center bolt fastening the yoke in place. For those of you that haven't watched it, you might want to watch our video that tells you about air fittings. We're about three weeks into it, and I'm using the Milton air fittings I tell you about there, and they're still working perfect. Only about a foot from the camera is the actual air hose. I can't make it make noise with the Milton fitting, even by grabbing it on and moving it around. So I'm using the Milton air fittings so far. I told you I'd tell you the truth about that video. They're working great. We'll see if they beat the Chinese True Value one pretty soon. We have a half inch socket here. Now if you use a long extension, you'll see I've got this extension is actually going through the X member. <coughs> Oops, wrong direction. That's on reverse. <coughs> there we go, fastened up. Go over here and get this one. Oops, get the right one here. It's a little hard for me to see because I'm trying to look around everything not be in the way of that camera. There it is. Last one. Alright. Housing is refastened. Now what we'll do is we'll switch over and we'll go to a, I believe it's a 5 8 Let's check. Yeah, it's 5 8 and we're going to fasten down our center bolt here. And I guarantee you, you want to use an impact gun because otherwise you won't get this thing tight enough. Especially since I've currently got that transmission in control. Alright. So there, everything's fastened up. 
so that it should be in working order. We don't have any appreciable end play in here, so we should be tight against our speedometer gear, and everything should work the way it's supposed to. All right, I'm back with another towel with some pre-cleaner. Purpose of that is I'm going to clean off this yellow wire. My pre-cleaner will clean it real good. The reason I'm going to clean off the yellow wire is I always want to be able to see it's yellow, so it's easy to trace, and that's the original color that belongs here. It is the wire in this vehicle that reads the governor, which is part of the electric hand auto clutch system that Hudson built. So we want to have this so we can tell it's a yellow wire if we ever need to get to it. Or somebody in the future owns it. It should be the right color. It is. So we'll clean that off with pre-cleaner. When that dries, it'll dry to where it'll be almost as yellow as original. Right now it'll show dark. But it does a really good job. And you can really, if you really want to work at it, you can probably clean it almost perfectly. But Perfect probably isn't necessary because it's going to get dirty again. Next, I'm going to grab our speedometer drive, which is here. It's been hanging down here since I took it off. You'll see it has this little piece right here on the side. That piece runs against the transmission to hold it in place. So you want it like, the, like I'm putting it. You can kind of see how it's running against the transmission. And then you have to start your nut up. The nut is actually captive. One other thing is it's actually got a square drive piece in there that you've got to get in properly. Now I'm going to have to get a wrench because you basically can't hand turn that thing at all up here. It's just it's too hard to get your fingers in here to hand turn it much. And get it part way, and I'm getting it some more. But in the end, you will need a wrench that you can get in here to actually get it. Since I wiped it off, I'm doing much better, in fact. But it will ultimately need a wrench to get it nice and tight. And make sure your tab is running against the transmission. That's so the piece won't run around down here. I am wiping it off a bit more here and there. And now I'm going to go get a wrench so it can be thoroughly tightened up the way it's supposed to be. For reference, you need a one inch wrench here. And there's not a lot of room to work against the transmission. So it's a bit of a job to gradually bring it up tight. But it can be done. This brake mechanism in here is sort of in the way, but not completely. As you see, I got it nice and tight now, and it's running against the transmission just like it's supposed to. Next thing we're going to do is put this governor back in here and have it set. We can turn the yoke around so we should be able to work around it with the governor. I'd like to get in there and get the wire back on. For those who are interested, this is the governor switch. It also has a square drive piece in it. The governor switch is made of unobtainium. I had to get that one by buying an entire car a number of years ago just to get a hold of it. The other thing is, is the shop manual tells you if it's not working, replace it with known good part. That's great. You can't get them anyway. Took it apart and found out it uses two flyweights and a spring across the center. And through a lot of careful adjusting of that spring, I got the thing to function. It's done great ever since. They tell you not to do that, but they're out of business, so I didn't obey the, what it said in the shop manual. I fixed it anyway. But if you ever are trying to have an electric hand system with auto clutch you actually need one of these things and as I said it's it's a darn hard to find I bought a whole car just to get it we're gonna put it back in place now once again you want to tighten that down but I wouldn't over tighten this because this is a Zamac housing and you could break it all right, this is a bigger nut than before. It's an inch and an eighth. As I said, just snug it. Don't pull on that wrench with full force on the end. You'll be sorry because you'll probably break the housing. Then you take your little wire here. 
and it has to go back in to the receptacle on the switch right there. That's all there is to it to re-hooking up the governor switch, which is absolutely necessary for the proper operation of the auto clutch electric hand system. Because if you don't have that in there, it's not going to pull the clutch out when you slow down and you're in third gear, for example. With it in there, it will pull it out and your clutch will operate properly. Now, the last two things to do to complete this operation is one, you want to put some sealant on your bottom threads here in your oil drain so that they definitely won't leak. I normally use Teflon sealant that's the uh, looks like marshmallow fluff Teflon thread sealant. Don't use the tape style, use the actual gooey style. And on the side where I sh talked about before, you have your drain up here on the side about in line with this point here. You take your drain open, what you're going to do is you're going to fill it with the gear oil as recommended in the shop manual. I usually use about 80 90 weight style gear oil will be just fine and you'll fill it up until it just barely starts to run out of that side dr drain actually it's the fill hole but it's effectively a drain when you put too much in and it'll come out the side a little bit you know you're full then then put it your plug back in and seal it up so that's all you're going to do there the other part you're going to do is reconnect your drive shaft up here and in the rear and it's pretty straightforward. If you haven't lubed the drive shaft in a while, you may want to do that. That's the end of the job of putting it back together.